Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Gris. Greece. With, Greece. With Greece with Chaos Counseling. It's like the a near eastern country. <laughs> I see. Uh, so, if anyone's wondering, last episode we talked about the intro that Luke likes to do for this series, apparently. And today, he just decided to... So he's going to, like, a, a party costume thing he do. And I'm dressed as adult Serlin. And... He just decided to remove the horns off of the head mm -hmm. to count down. Hold the phone. Wait. Just wanted to double check. Yep. Okay. Back we go. And we'll climb up again this time for real. Um. Oh, that's a beautiful windmill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love the gradients. Oh, that's beautiful. I like the fact that there are technically three colors on screen, not counting the main character's blue hair, and <gasps> they're able to still convey um uh, shadows. Well, I mean, okay, I know you can convey shadows with just black and white. But. Yeah. But the depth, <gasps> the range they're able to do. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was trying with, to like, say. With, like, the different, like, shades and saturations of it. Hi! <gasps> this oh! Wait a minute. Are we going inside a death egg? I have no idea. Hello? Beep! Okay. Oh! Uh, I... I... I'm not gonna go that way. Yeah. Anything? Aw, oh, man. The kindergartners worked all day on that project. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Hello. Ah, moving rock! Wait. Wait. Okay. You want to know what those yeah. moving rocks remind me of Sunshine? What? Those fucking bomb spiders from Pikmin 2. Oh. Uh, I remember what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I lost so many Pikmin to those fuckity doodah things. Still, they're not as bad as the explosive gunfish oh. that could just go fuck right off. Eh. Pressure plate! <gasps> Quickly! Now I've got to make the quick swap! Before, to keep the pressure plate out. Oh no, you've just run off. All right, I guess we can all just die. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything? Oh, I feel bad that I'm destroying all these cool rocks. Yeah, I mean you're destroying the um. Uh... Come on, lift me up. Thank you. Yeah, you're destroying the trail markers. Now how's someone else gonna follow? Yeah, I'm gonna stop hitting those because it doesn't seem like there's anything in there. Stars up there. Okay. Get up. Hop. Hop. Okay, you wanna know? Oh. The flowing cloak and the stars, it just reminded me of that one magic item you sent me, Sunshine, for DD. &D. That is like the cloak that had stars on it you could yep. pull off and throw. Mm-hmm. Oh. Leap of faith! I want the star. Oh. Okay, that's in case I fall. Okay. Hmm. Oh! Oh, I get it! I get it! I'm glad one of us does. Ugh. Oh! I'm smart. <laughs> 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 I say as I pretend to just completely rub my hand against my nose. Oh, almost didn't do that. Sweet! Now we got three, now we can go over here. Oh, my knees! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, this girl's strong. Weep! Weep! Thank you! I'm not gonna make it. Dang it. Thank you! Okay. Well, at least we're not doing a speed run, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at speed runs. I'm unfortunate. Same. I'm you know, the best I ever got in regards to speed runs is I eventually got Metroid Fusion down practically to, like, I looked it up, and it wasn't anything that impressive, but I think I was able to beat Metroid Fusion, like, within in two hours flat. Oh, oh wow. That's just because it's like... And again, that is with no attempt at completion, just grabbing what was right in front of me. 
Oh, just to like rush yeah. through it. Yeah, like not c- completing it, just beating it. It's just because it was during a time where we didn't have very many, we didn't have money for new Game Boy games. So, uh, and honestly, I think at the time, Metroid Fusion was the one of the games I hadn't played to death. They're oh. just ended up really loving in spite of that, you know? And yeah, I just really fell in love with Metroid Fusion. And for the fun of it, I actually might, okay, we're going on a 12 hour road trip to Disneyland. How many times could I beat Metroid Fusion in the simple car ride? Now I only actually did it twice before I'm like, okay, this is getting ridiculous and did something else. Oh, thank you. Thank you, fan. I appreciate it. Oh. I mean, I think anyone at home can admit it's like, yeah, the only reason why I loved this game as a kid is because I spent my money on it and I had no choice but to play it Mm -hmm. because I couldn't afford anything else. I don't think there's anything up there. If there is, I've screwed it, but here we go. Back down we go. Woo! (laughs) Okay, just seeing those, like, momentum and gaps. Like I said, I've just been playing, um, uh... Some platformers like Spy- the Insane Trilogy and the Reignited Trilogy. So whenever I see something like that, my heart just sinks because I'm like, oh crap, the momentum's going to be wrong and you're going to fall to the death. And I'm like, oh wait, you can't actually die in this game. <laughs> well, some momentum is interesting. Like, in Xenoblade Chronicles, the m- ice physics is, uh, like, uh, really interesting and broken. And so sometimes people think like, man, they programmed it so weird. But then you get to a certain point and you realize that there's just an area full of ice and you look in the distance and you see a ramp. And you're like, oh, they programmed it for a reason. (laughs) And then you just go onto the slide and just fling yourself across this chasm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Just yeet yourself into the void. (laughs) And I remember, like, just since we talked about Symphonia earlier, uh, love that game, but the two worst areas in the game are the two areas with ice physics. Ugh. Like, there's a puzzle you have to do um, like on actual ice. Then there's another puzzle you have to do in zero gravity that functions like ice. And both puzzles were shit. Those are the worst. But in the sequel... Oh. When they got to that ice dungeon, they, like, tried to freeze the water, but it wasn't working. But what they did instead is beforehand, a character gave you a thing where you can just walk on water. So you just walk right across that annoying puzzle. <laughs> so, yeah, right. We screwed up with this. We won't subject you to it again. I'm like, thank you. And unfortunately, that doesn't make up for all the other awful elements that were in Tales of Symphonia 2. Oh, okay. I was literally about to ask, wait, what game was it? I Because I had zoned out trying to... No, you're good. Yeah, I think... Again, I like the Tales series, and I even have a soft spot for Tales of Symphonia 2, because, you know, we played it when it first came out. But it is a bad game. And it's Mm. one of those that it's like, I try to pretend that it doesn't exist, and it's not canonical. Actually, to be fair, since Tales of Symphonia is actually a prequel to Tales of Fantasia, I don't think it is canonical. Because the only way for Tales of Symphonia 2 to be Ah. in canon with the plot of Tales of Fantasia is if you get the bad ending. No, I actually heard the opposite, that it's what happens at the end of the good ending is what sets it up for Tales of Fantasia. Okay, but the plot of Tales of Fantasia is that... Uh, I'm trying to remember the main villain's name. You know, came to... Uh, spoilers for Tales of Fantasia, but the game's nearly 30 years old, so I don't care. Oh, um, I'll put it up anyway. Um, is that he came to the planet you're on to steal the ma- the giant Carlon, or the, the giant tree that gave everlasting mana. But if you get the good ending in Tales of Symphonia 2, so spoilers for that game as well, what happens is that <laughs> um, uh, Ratatosk uses his monsters to rewrite the natural order so that the inhabitants of the planet you're on don't need mana. Yeah, and that's part of um, part of the Tales of Fantasia is the world was rewritten, so living things no longer require mana to live. But why would they then care if the guy was stealing the mana then? <sighs> I mean, it could I mean, still be a power it, source. Because I, I am confident that I've heard that it is a good ending that is canonical with Tales of Fantasia. 
Whee! Ah! Oh. Anyway, I feel kind of smart that I was able to find that, but I'm sure that was a fairly easy puzzle. Yeah, it's always... You remember your ode to sanity in our in our Portal 2 playthrough? Uh, yeah. And you're just like, it's right there. It's right there. It, it says something, because sometimes I kind of, like, I know it's... I try not to pay, as, as bad as this sounds, I try not to pay too much attention in puzzle games when I'm not playing, because I know, like, once people, like... Once you figure it out and someone else hasn't figured it out and you can't do anything with it, people can get very frustrated with it. So I usually tend to zone out, but I did have permission that if I found out something that like I could scream at them in editing. So I was like, oh, okay. And so normally I zoned out, but it got to a point where I was like... I mean, we were stuck on this puzzle for like 30 minutes. It, it it was so interesting because like again normally I don't consider myself to be the best puzzle solver but so when I thought that I solved it I was like oh my gosh did I figure it out before they did I'm like hold on I could be completely wrong let's just wait it out and watch and then when it, the solution was what I thought I literally went back in my editing and was like I want to be right because I'm a terrible person <laughs> oh Poor speeder. Oh. oh! I'm sorry! Can you push that rock to where you need to go? Nope. No. No. Uh, I... I... Oh, I feel so bad. I don't know. Um... <gasps> Hi, bud! So one thing I've... Oh. Hi. Uh... So one thing thank I've you? noticed about... Oh, thank you! Um, uh, like, noticing when... What some, you know, if you can notice something that the player can't... When I was watching Cry's playthrough of whatever the Cthulhu game that was Oh, famously, Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, the one that's famously broken. <laughs> he was constantly going around, I was like, where's the Tommy gun or whatever? And he actually pauses in editing and zooms in that he ran right past one, but because he's just so focused on playing what's directly in front of the character's face, he wasn't really paying too much attention to the character's peripheral. It happens. That It honestly happens. Like, if I was editing my own bullcrap, I want to think that I would also do that just for comedic effect to be like, because that would be amazing if someone's like, how do I do this? And then it's like right there on the screen and you don't, <laughs> and you only notice it in editing and you're like, I was an idiot. Or it's, it's like, how do I do this? Wait, there's a little convenient sign that says to do this, press A. <laughs> oh, um, sorry, just press A in a, Portal 2, for those who don't know, at the very beginning, um, uh, the joke is is that because you've been in hibernation for so long, your functions aren't correct. So when you're supposed to, like, talk, you accidentally jump instead or something <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. I don't remember what it was. It's a, Yeah, Portal 2. Well, so I saw a sign out in Happiness short that kind of reminded me of that. This guy came in saying that his game was broken, and the guy's like, here, let me check it out. The game was called, I think, Bunker Buster. And the game person at the store is like, well, it looks like it's working. Keep playing. So then that shows who the avatar is, and you're playing as Hitler. Oh. Oh, gosh. And, um... Okay, then. Um, so what it is, like, okay, press A X to jump. It jumps. Press the trigger to fire. Pulls the trigger. Tur gun turns around and shoots him in the head. It's like... Well, game seems right to me, but there's no game to it. Oh, so I suppose you want the Nazis to win World War II, huh? Oh, gosh. Can I at least exchange it for a different game? It's like, sure. Exchange it for, ex I think it's called like Extreme and Frank. It's like, press X to jump, jump, and then you hear it, and then you hear vo voices. There's someone in the attic, and then it oh. fires up. Oh, no. I'm, mm. I don't know how I feel about this joke anymore. Yeah, it's one of those. It's like, okay, it was kind of funny when it was, you know, making fun of, you know. I mean, like, even then, I don't I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, did we ever tell you about the really bad Dragon Ball Z and Frank fanfic that someone... Uh, I don't think I want to know anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's like, who thought this was a good idea? Uh... I assume this is supposed to move, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I'll go and move it now. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I didn't do it. Nope. 
You know, just your yeet. Mm. It kind of reminded me of Abby uh, from Custom Robo. The ring. <laughs> oh, the ring thing. Yeah. That totally caught me off guard. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> that was amazing. It's like, that... it was kind of Abby's version of my scream of what? Yeah, so for context, in our Custom Robo uh, game, there's like a point near the end of the game where the phone goes off and it just has like a loud ring on it. And it was, oh, I see now. It was the first session we were going to do of Custom Robo. So we were all like quiet, like Mm -hmm. getting things set up. And then we're like, are we good to go? And I think Luke did the countdown. And Abby, instead of saying, hello, everybody, and welcome back to, at the time, couples therapy, said she was just like, (laughs) they like totally caught all of us off guard. Yeah. No joke. I thought you were about to hit the edges because of just... Not the clipping, I think that's not the correct word for it, but just the way... Hello? Oh, oh. Wow. It really is the tallest Ferris wheel in the world because it takes you up to the clouds. Oh, that's, oh, that's that so that pretty! An episode. Oh, this All is right. so pretty! Look at my little tail! This is so pretty! <laughs> okay, you look like a chicken having a seizure! <laughs> Bye. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. I ruined the mood. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.